Hey guys, welcome to the Joe Jaguar show again. Okay, maybe this video shouldn't be too long. Um, what is a Burge Jones telescope? Well, this is a Burge Jones telescope. What does it mean? What's it good for? And why have you maybe not never heard of that name? Basically what it means, it's a reflecting telescope, right? A reflecting telescope is one that has a mirror in the back, all reflectors, the mirror in the back, and has a secondary mirror over here, and it reflects the image to with a focuser or the side, and that's why they call it a reflecting or reflector. Okay, now, how you can tell if it's a Burge Jones de design, or basically just means they put a like a Barlow lens or an amplifier type of thing, usually it's two times, in the focuser itself to achieve a higher focal uh, length and ratio than it technically has. One way to spot them is, as you can tell, this is a short tube reflector. So if you look at the specs, so I'm not sure you guys, one, thousand millimeter focal length f 8.9 now how can this little tiny guy be a thousand millimeter focal length usually uh, you know that kind of focal length is on something like a compound scope or a really long type of refractor a long reflector well that's why it's called the Burge Jones, which just basically, again, means they put like a Barlow lens, a two times amplifier in the light path to achieve that focal ratio. Okay, so that's how you can tell. This technically without that would be like 500 millimeter focal length. Now, um, this is one bad part of this. If you see this type of design, yes, it's more portable, as you can see, it's very small, lightweight. This is on an EQ1 because it is such a small and lightweight scope. You can probably put it on an EQ1. Won't be rock solid. EQ2 might be a bit better, but that's okay. But usually, um, if you see the short tube reflectors, okay, and this size again should be 500 millimeter focal length. Now they do sell one like this. That's a 500 millimeter focal length because it's not to say that all short tube reflectors are the bad ones. Um, if it is this size and it's 500 millimeter focal length, then it most likely has a parabolic mirror. Now, if it has a parabolic mirror, means no matter where the light um, hits the mirror, because of the way it's shaped, every single piece of light reflects at the same focal point. Now, a spherical mirror doesn't. The light uh, focuses at different points, so it's not as sharp and not as clear. So, in this Burge Jones design, or the reflector with the Barlow, if that's easier to say, is what they do, it technically is a four and a half inch reflector. I mean, it doesn't have to be only a four and a half inch reflector. It could be a six inch, it could be a five inch, it, it doesn't really matter. Sometimes it used to have, uh, I remember Celestra made one back then, uh, F4, and it became an F8. So you should maybe stay away from those just because, uh, it, again, it uses a spherical mirror, which is a less quality mirror. It's not as good. Uh, now, that, that's not to say that all spherical mirrors are bad. Now, if you use a spherical mirror and you have a tube that's twice as long, uh, like F8, F9, F10, then it's not so bad. It corrects most of the aberrations. So if you have a spherical mirror, and that's maybe one thing you guys should maybe check. If you're gonna be buying a telescope, look to see if it's a spherical mirror. Now, if it's a very long tube, it's not so bad. It's cheaper to make that kind of mirror, so it's okay. The problem lies when they give you a spherical mirror in this little tiny short kind of tube, the image is gonna be really bad. So what they try to do is they put a Barlow lens or a 
a two times amplifier, magnifier, whatever you want to call it, same, same thing anyway, in here to give it like a longer focal length in a short tube. The problem is it still gives you bad views. Now, not horrible views, but softer than if this guy was just a four and a half inch with a parabolic mirror and leave it at 500 millimeter or F5 focal ratio, focal length, it would be fine with a parabolic mirror. It'll be wide field with the, the parabolic mirror will give you some decent uh, good views. Um, so it's just the problem is when you have the short compact design with the Barlow inside, that both of those combinations are, are not so good. So again, if, you, if you're gonna buy one, you gotta look at the specs. If it's a long tube reflector with a spherical mirror, it'll be cheaper. It'll correct for most of it, not all of it, but at least most of it. Um, and if you see one that's a short design and it's a spherical mirror and it has this long focal length, it's gonna have that Barlow in there. Otherwise, it just would be unusable. Now, some people I've heard in other forums and you know have taken the focuser out, taken out that Barlow, and just use it like a 500 millimeter focal length. Um, and I heard it's supposed to be okay. Now, it's still, remember, it's not a parabolic mirror if you do that. So a spherical mirror, I mean, you know, leaving it at an F5 is still gonna have, be, I kind of, I think, iffy too. So I, I don't recommend it. If you want a short tube design, get the one with a parabolic mirror, F, you know, at F5. It's still gonna be decent. Um, and if you, like, again, it's not to say that the spherical it is a bad design overall, but just make sure if it's a spherical, it's a long tube. If it's not, I, I would say uh, bypass these uh, ones with the Barlow inside. The images are gonna be just very soft, very uh, like fuzzier. Uh, and you know, everything in the sky is dim, it's far away. Uh, there's no point, uh, these things are already hard to look at. So why use like, really cheap eyepieces, really cheap finders, uh, a cheaper mirror, just get it something better where you're gonna enjoy the view, right? Hopefully makes sense, right? So again, the problem occurs on two things. They give you the spherical mirror in a compact design, and then they put the Barlow inside. So you're getting something light, portable, and it throws you off because if you know you think oh a thousand millimeter it's going to hit that 200 power it's going to be very fuzzy and unclear at, at those kind of powers so again guys i would recommend either get it in a long tube version or if you get the, if you want the shorter tube because it's just more portable and more easier to carry then just get the parabolic one without the barlow and it should say if it's this size it should say 500 millimeter f5 a focal length and ratio then you're good to go um, if you want a compact one and that's it so that's what a Jones uh, bird Jones design is basically it's a Barlow in the focuser I would say try to avoid it there they are they are cheaper as well so a lot of people fall for that too because they th what's the difference they see one that's uh, let's say $200 and then they see one that's almost $100 more maybe $70 $80 more and it's like why pay that m amount because everything looks exactly the same on the outside even the eyepieces and finder everything will be the same the only difference is that other one that costs more it's gonna have the parabolic mirror and it's gonna be 500 millimeter focal length this one has the Barlow has a cheaper mirror the spherical mirror and it's gonna be a thousand millimeter focal length because that Barlow's magnifying that 500 millimeter times two giving you a thousand so again maybe stay away from these designs if you can um, and just get the other one uh, hopefully you like this video I know it wasn't too long but that's okay they don't always have to be uh, long um, hopefully you guys enjoy that comment like subscribe to my channel I'll see you guys next time